hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Before we jump into the concept of polypeptides and proteins, which we'll do in this video, what I want to do first, I want to cover proteins again and what proteins actually do. If you remember from one of the very first videos, I talked about the role of enzymes in metabolism. Metabolism was just all chemical reactions that happen in our body, and the role of enzymes was to speed up chemical reactions. And remember also that enzymes were actual proteins, so enzymes were proteins. So the idea in this case, what I've here is actually a all the biochemical pathways. This is what happens in our cell. So all of this happens in our cell to make sure our cell stays alive. All of these are chemical reactions, and they all have to occur to make sure our cell stays alive. And this is just a part, this part here might be just a tiny fraction of all of those chemical reactions. Remember enzymes, what they do is they will be on all of these parts of your biochemical pathways, there will be enzymes that make sure these chemical reactions can actually occur. So without enzymes, we wouldn't have, our cells would basically not be able to survive, and enzymes are proteins. So that's one example of how proteins are really essential when it comes to a normal everyday survival. A collagen is also an example of a protein, and this collagen is a protein that we can find in skin and in hair. So if we can't make this collagen protein, we wouldn't be able to have skin, and, skin or hair. That's just two examples. Now hemoglobin, again, that's not a protein. The globin part stands for protein. Globin is protein. And remember what hemoglobin, what that was? Hemoglobin helped us carry oxygen. So without hemoglobin, we wouldn't be able to carry oxygen. And if we couldn't produce hemoglobin, then we wouldn't be able to carry oxygen. So we have to have some way that we actually can produce hemoglobin. Now cell membranes. Cell membranes have lots, lots of lipids. These would be lipids. But they also have these carrier proteins. These carrier proteins help us to selectively just take the stuff we want and make it go into our cells. So these carrier proteins are proteins, and thereby we need to have some way that we can actually make these proteins. Muscles are another example. In muscles, we have two different types of proteins called actin and myosin. And these proteins are to do with muscle contraction. So if we didn't have these proteins, we wouldn't be able to contract our muscles. And there's many more examples. I mean, I could mention, for example, insulin and glucagen. These are two proteins that are hormones. So these are hormones, and remember, hormones are chemical messengers. Without insulin and glucagen, we wouldn't be able to control our blood glucose levels. And I could go on and on and on. But the main gist is that proteins are absolutely essential, and we need to have some way that we can make proteins. And this is what this video will introduce, and we'll go over the concept of how, how to make proteins in the next couple of years as well. The actual dot point itself says, explain the relationship between proteins and polypeptides. So how are polypeptides and proteins linked? That's what we're going to cover in this video. What I'll do first, I'll talk about something called amino acids. Now, if you might have heard that, you probably should have heard that name before, amino acids. This here is your typical amino acid. It has an amine group which is this here, it's NH2, or sometimes it can be NH3+. plus. But this is your amine group, and every amino acid has it. They also have this called boxyl acid group, so this is the acid group. So as you can see, the actual name amino acid comes from two parts which are in this chain, the amine group and the acid group. That's why they call amino acids. And they also all have in hydrogen as well, but importantly they have this R, which also comes off structure, and this R stands for rest group. So this could be anything that could be attached. There's a, lots of different types of things that could be attached there, and that makes them different. So there's 20 different types of amino acids. We have Here we have a picture of amino acids. There's 20 different types of amino acids, and the way they're different, they all have these amine groups and these acid groups, and the hydrogen sticking off one of the carbons, but the way they're different is you have these different R groups. So here we have, I mean, you won't be able to see this in detail, but here this is one of the R groups, Here's the R group as well. Each of them has their different R groups, and they can be slightly different or they be, can be quite different. But the main gist is that we have 20 overall amino acids, and they 
the difference is that R group. Again, you don't really need to know that, but you should know that there's 20 different amino acids, and you can just visualize that the difference between the amino acids is just these R groups. And why do you need to know about amino acids? Because amino acids, if we join amino acids together, so here we have two amino acids, and what has happened is they're connecting here, so they have connected. Here's where these two have connected, and they have connected through a peptide bond. So a peptide bond happens when we have two amino acids that have bonded together. And now, if this were to happen over and over again, then we call this a polypeptide. So this is where that name polypeptide comes in, which is also in the silver dot point. Explain the relationship between proteins and polypeptides. So polypeptide is just a chain of these amino acids, and they were chained together by these peptide bonds. Now how do we produce, uh, where do we get amino acids from? I mean, most of our amino acids we get from our dye, we eat them. And we can also produce a couple of them, most of them we get from our diet. But the important thing is with these amino acids, we can then make peptides, polypeptides. And I'm quickly going to go over this in a nutshell, but I'm going to cover it more in the next video, how that works. But the main idea is that we have these, for example, I mentioned earlier that a gene itself is just a part of a, a part of the DNA that codes for a specific trait. So this might be our gene, this part here. And usually, I mean, this is, I mean, there's nine bases here, but usually there'd be many more bases. I mean, it would go on and there might be 10,000 bases that make up a gene. But let's say, let's say it's a simple one, a very simple one. And there's only three bases, uh, nine bases to make up those genes. So what actually happens is each of these three bases, three bases always code, so three bases code for a amino acid. And again, I'm going to go over this concept more in the next video. But you can see here we've got a couple of different versions. Let's say we have GCG, and we can use this actual guide to tell us what kind of amino acid that would that would um, be, make. So it would actually make this one, GCG. And that is argon. Argon, I think. Or so ACE GCG would code for this one. Again, names are important, just you need to know that it's a different type of amino acid. And AGC, you would look again, you would just find what kind of that codes for, what kind of amino acid, and would be this one here. So AGC, and that's serine. Right, so again, you'd take that orange one, which is meant to be serine, that codes for this one. This is a simplified version. We're going to go over it in detail in the next video. And then CCC, that codes for this one, proline. So this is proline here, CCC. And proline might be, let's say, the green one. So these three here, CCC, code for this one. Now, these three bases that always code for amino acid, we call them codons. They are called codons. I'm going to go over them in the next video. But yeah, what you should know now is we you might actually connect these, right? So we said that we connect them through peptide bonds. And then after a while, we don't call them amino acids anymore, we call them polypeptides. So these bonds are the peptide bonds. And again, this is a simplified version. We're going to go over it in detail in the next video. But what happens after we've produced a polypeptide chain, and again, this is only three long, but they can be many thousands of amino acids long. So this is just very simplified. But after we've produced our polypeptide chain, what actually happens is they start to twist, right? So this is our polypeptide chain here, our initial chain. And then what happens is they start twisting around and they form a very twisted structure. And sometimes, for some proteins, that's enough. They're just really twisted. But then other proteins will have different types of polypeptide chains come together to form an even bigger protein. So this, for example, might be hemoglobin. And hemoglobin consists of four separate polypeptide chains. They've all twisted, twisted around. So here's one chain. Here's another one. 
here's another one, here's another one. So hemoglobin is actually four polypeptide chains. And I'm going to show you a quick video that just goes over again how we go from polypeptide chain to a protein. Right, so I'll show you that video now. Proteins are polymers constructed from the same set of 20 different amino acids. The primary structure is the specific sequence of amino acids specified by the gene. In the secondary structure, portions of the protein begin to coil and fold into unique three-dimensional formations. Two kinds of secondary structure units are the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. The folds and coils of the protein are the result of hydrogen bonds that occur at regular intervals. The tertiary structure is formed by interactions between side chains of various amino acids. At this stage, some proteins are complete. Other proteins incorporate multiple polypeptide subunits, creating what is known as the quaternary structure. Yeah, I hope that video was useful, but the main idea that you should get from this video is not necessarily how this works. This is how amino acids go to polypeptides, because we're going to go over that in the next video. But the main idea is that these polypeptide chains can be made from DNA, and when they're made, they will twist and fold to ultimately produce our proteins. And through different genes, we can then produce different proteins. You don't need to remember the names of the amino acids. You don't need to remember the structure of the amino acids. You don't need to remember even that they you know, form these peptide bonds. What you need to remember is that polypeptides are made from amino acids and then can twist and fold to produce proteins. And these proteins are extremely important for the reasons we mentioned earlier, because proteins basically make up a huge chunk of our body. But hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.